Oh man, it's the grab bag! Alright, now I can start my backlog of reviews that I have set up. And I'm going to start with the three body problem. So, I had first heard about this from watching a YouTuber called Quinn's Ideas. And I've been following that channel since it was called Ideas of Ice and Fire. Um, he's been covering a lot of sci-fi series that people haven't really heard of. And, you know, I don't have the time that I used to where I could just plow through one sci-fi book after another. So having a channel that can talk about really good ones and ones that may not be so good, it's been fun. Um, and then I had heard about the three body problem being made on Netflix but it was being made by the two guys who show who were the showrunners of Game of Thrones. And with how Game of Thrones ended, it was kind of like, I don't know how this is going to go. The one perk is, unlike uh, Game of Thrones, this author actually finished his series. But on... Uh, the point is that... Uh, a little complaint about George R.R. R. Martin. Um... Your fans want you to finish your books, and if you can't do it yourself, get a ghostwriter. Get somebody else to help co-write. Um, it's been long enough, you know. Um, I read A Dance with Dragons back when I was working at a part-time job at a gas station. And it's now been 14 years since then? 15? 16? I can't even remember. I just remember that I got the entire game, well, A Song of Ice and Fire book series for Christmas, and I read the entire series in a month, which I do not suggest. That is a very difficult series to read, but now I'm going on a diatribe rather than talking about the actual show. So, The Three Body Problem is a book series that is complete, and the showrunners are really good. Uh, Dan, I think it's what Dave and Dave... Um, or Dan and Dave, uh, they're really good at adapting series from books. And this first season, I loved. I thought it was incredible. Um, the acting was great. The buildup was great. The reveals were intense. And the last two episodes kind of start slowing down a little. But... If you uh, have been following the series being covered by Quinn's Ideas, uh, you know that the Wallfacer program begins and it starts to get crazy. Um, so, now that I've gone through a bit of a preamble, I'm just going to say, spoiler alert. Uh, the Shanti, or the, also known as the Trisolarians, uh, they are an alien race from a world with three suns. They came in contact with humanity back during the communist takeover of China. And this uh, person who was working for the Chinese government, who hated the communists, but was a super intelligent woman, um, she responded to a message telling them to come to their world. And... Then they kept in contact, and this is all going on in the background. Well, the aliens had sent a thing called the Sophons, which are these super intelligent computers that are the size of a, a molecule, but they can also expand to massive sizes. Well, they basically have been flying around the Earth and watching everyone and sending the data back. The Trisolarans um, had at first thought that they were going to be able to come and coexist with the humans, but, well, they found out that humans are capable of lying, and they can't lie. And so they decided to send a fleet to wipe out humanity because of how fast humanity is um, expanding their technology. So we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Um, and the show follows a group of scientists who are all friends trying to figure out what's going on. Um, but I will say my personal favorite character out of all the characters in the show 
is Clarence, the in, the uh, basically investigator. He his sense of uh, humor very dry. Um, he, he was throwing one liners that were like completely dry, but they were great. Personally, favorite character in the show. Um, I really like the build up and the people going on their different journeys. I wonder how. Uh, things are going to turn around with season two, and it would be nice if it didn't take two years, but we're probably not going to see season two until 2026. Um, I don't want to go into too many spoilers, just the uh, one character was working on a science for uh, nanofibers, and when that comes into fruition later, it is an amazing but devastating scene and it it alone makes it worth watching the show but some people are arguing that's where the first season should have ended i'm fine with where it went um but there were some tragedies that have gone on and it does make me wonder what's going to happen with how they're going to adapt the second book and the continuation of the on well the upcoming war Yes, uh, humanity finds out about the Shanti, and they have to start uh, preparing, or the Santi. Um, they have to start preparing for the aliens that are on their way, and they're trying to figure out ways of doing this, because the aliens can watch and basically comment on whatever they're doing due to their supercomputer. Um, and that's why they developed the Wallfacer program, where... A few people have been chosen to create ideas to basically they have carte blanche to command anyone to use any amount of money on anything and to figure out anything at all. And they don't have to tell anybody what their idea is. And that's kind of interesting. Um, and that's going to build up with season two, which I'm going to assume they're going to start using the cryogenic freezing with season two where they hop in and out to figure things out. But um, I'm wondering what they're going to do with some of the characters because not all of them are going to go through the cryogenic freezing. So who's going to be in the cast of characters during season two? I don't know. But I really enjoyed the series and I do want to know where it's going to go because they have 400 years to prepare for the aliens. Um... But anyways, I'll catch you next time.